Reference Frames, Displacement, and Velocity. Speed, distance, and time, the quantities that we've already defined, didn't require us to say where we started and where we ended up. They just measured how far we traveled and how long it took to get there. However, much of physics is based upon knowing where something is and how its position changes with time. Now, to define position, okay, which is a new term we're talking about, we have to have a reference frame. And we'll talk about what that is next. A reference frame, right over here, lets us define where an object is located and we describe it relative to other objects. So the key word here is relative to other objects. For example, we can use a map to compare the location of different cities. We can see, for example, New York City is east of San Francisco or different continents. For example, up here we have China and here we have Australia. So we can say Australia is south of China. However, not every reference frame is appropriate for every problem. Let's try an exercise to see if we can come up with what a reference frame is. First of all, we'll need a volunteer who will have to leave the classroom to wait for further instructions. Okay, now we're going to place an object somewhere in your classroom. We need the team to write specific directions for that person who left to be able to come in and locate the object. You have to write them in such a way that you can hand them, right over here, hand them to that person they can then follow the direction to the object. However, a couple more rules. You can't tell them where it's near. You can just say how they have to move to get to it. For example, walk to the smart board is not a specific direction. So then bring your classmate back in, give them the sheet of directions, and ask them to find the object. After your classmate came back in, we're now going to reflect on what occurred. So go back into your groups, right over here, and make a list of the things you needed that worked, that, that were good with the directions that helped your classmate locate where the object was. Be sure to include that person in your discussion, of course. Then as a class, discuss your findings. As part of your discussion, hopefully you found out that you needed the following things. One, you needed to tell the person where to start. You needed a starting point, and probably that was the opening to your classroom. Second, you needed a set of directions. For example, you could have told the student to go left, you could have told them to go forward, backward, up, down, right, many different ways to talk about directions. And third, you needed a unit of measure. We talked earlier in the chapter about how we're going to use meters for distance. Perhaps in this case, your unit of measure might have been a step, a couple steps, a pace. Or you could have said walk 10 meters and hopefully they had a meter stick to use. Now here's what we're going to use to do physics. We, you can see we have a coordinate system. We call this an X, Y, Z coordinate system. Z, this looks a little tricky because it's at an angle. What we really mean here is Z is coming out of the board towards you. It's kind of a three-dimensional reference frame. It's hard to draw in two dimensions, which is why we draw it at this angle. So we're going to call the origin zero. Right at the zero point, there's the origin. We have three perpendicular axes, x, y, and then z coming out of the board. And of course, we're going to use the meter as our measure. We're not going to use footsteps or paces or anything else like that. For this course, for this algebra-based physics course, we're only going to be solving problems in one dimension. Typically, we're going to use the x-axis, the horizontal axis, plus x over here, positive x will be defined as to the right. Negative x is going to be defined as to the left, just like the number lines you did in grade school. We could absolutely define it any way you want, but we're going to agree to use this convention. Positive is to the right and left is negative. Also, we could pretend we had a compass here. And if we had a compass, north would be positive, south would be negative, or east, which is to the right, would be positive, and west would be negative. The symbol for, pos for position is going to be x. Later on in physics, when you do two and even three dimensions, then we will use y and z. But for now, we just need to use x. 
we know how to define position, right? We have the reference frames. We mark off our position with reference to the reference frame. So we can say something is two meters east of a point, three meters south. We're now going to talk about a change in position. The symbol for change is the Greek letter delta. So that, that looks like this, just looks like a triangle. Okay, that means delta. So delta x means the change in x or the change in position. Displacement describes how far you are from where you started, regardless of how you got there. We don't care. You could have gone right and then left. You could have gone left and then right. It doesn't matter. We just want to know how far you are from your starting point when you're finished with your movement. Here's an example. You drive 60 miles from Pennsylvania to New Jersey. For those of you not familiar with the East Coast, that means you're going from west to east or the direction east, which before we've discussed east would be positive. So we're going to start here, x0. Typically that's where we start. We call it x sub 0. And we're going to go 60 miles east. And then we will drive 20 miles back towards Pennsylvania, which is in the west direction, or negative x. And we highlight that with the green arrow right over here. So first we went east, and then we went west. And you can see how we started the green arrow from the tip of the red arrow, which was the uh, first, first part of our journey towards New Jersey. So it's pretty, pretty easy to understand that you've traveled a total distance of 80 miles. You went 60 miles out to New Jersey, then another 20 miles back, so your car speedometer, odometer, has increased by 80 miles. However, and here's where the physics comes in, your displacement from your final position, which we label x sub f, from your initial position is only 40 miles. You're only 40 miles away from where you started. And we can calculate, we need an equation here, displacement is found by delta x, that's the change in position, equals my final position minus initial. And as you can see, the displacement is less than the distance. Measurements of distance can only be positive values. Your car's odometer never shows a negative mileage. It's always increasing, always positive. You cannot travel a negative distance. I mean, just trying to imagine measuring a negative length with a meter stick. You just can't do it. However, displacement can be positive or negative since you can end up to the right or the left of where you started. For example, in this case, this is my initial position, x0. My final is xf. So when I take displacement, which is final minus initial, this is a larger number than x initial. So when I have xf minus x0, I get a positive number, so my displacement is positive or to the right. In the second case, you can see we've gone to the left. My final position here, let's see, that's at uh, positive 1. My initial position was 1, 2, 3 on the number line. So x of f, f minus x sub 0 is 1 minus 3 or negative 2. So the displacement is negative. Displacement can be either positive or negative. Distance must be positive. Speed has been defined as the ratio of distance and time. We've only calculated examples where the speed of the object doesn't change. It's a constant. Another name for this is instantaneous speed. When an object's speed changes over time, the same formula is used to calculate its average speed. A bar is placed over the S to indicate average speed. Earlier, we started with distance, which is a scalar, and then we defined displacement, which is a vector version of that. We're going to do the same thing here. Speed is a scalar. What's more interesting is when we not only consider the magnitude of an object's motion, but in which direction it's moving. That's going to be velocity. Velocity is a vector, and it gives the magnitude and direction of the object's motion. It is defined as v is delta x over delta t, where delta x is the displacement of the object, not the distance anymore. When delta t gets very small, v is known as the instantaneous velocity. The velocity of a moving object can be described as 15 meters per second to the east, or 15 meters per second in the positive direction, depending on the reference frame used. 
See, we're giving it a direction here, and you have to define what kind of directions you want to talk about. Just like speed, sometimes during an object's motion, the velocity will change. For instance, if you're driving to the grocery store, there may be a highway where the car travels quickly, and there may be many stop signs when the car's velocity is zero. The average velocity for the trip can be found by dividing the total displacement by the elapsed time. The symbol for average velocity is V with a bar on it. And again, that's a similar equation to just instantaneous velocity, but in instantaneous velocity, this time period is very, very tiny. In this case, it can be any time and any displacement. Your average velocity can be positive, negative, or zero, depending on the motion with respect to the starting point. And to further emphasize the instantaneous velocity, the average velocity can't tell us the velocity at every moment in time. It's just the average for the entire trip. Continuing with our trip to the grocery store. When the car stops at a stop sign, we say that its instantaneous velocity is zero. The instantaneous velocity is the velocity of an object at a very brief moment in time. Mathematically, we've got V instantaneous is delta X over delta T. Okay, the same formula for the average velocity, but we shrink the time interval that we're looking for the velocity to a very, very, very tiny point, very close to zero. And again, the instantaneous velocity can either be positive, negative, or zero, depending on the motion. Here's a little exercise on vectors and scalars. A scalar is a quantity that has only a magnitude, which is a number or value, like 1, 2, 3, 10. A vector is a quantity that has both a magnitude and a direction like six meters per second in the north direction. So take a couple seconds and discuss or figure out here, annotate it, which of the following are vectors, which are scalars. The answer will be on the next side when you're ready for it. Okay, time is a scalar. It only goes in one way, all right? There's no sense of two minutes or two seconds in the east direction or two seconds backwards. It only goes forward. Distance, of course, is a scalar. Displacement is the vector version of distance. Speed we defined earlier as a scalar. It's just the magnitude. It tells you nothing about which way the object's going. And velocity is a vector. It gives you both the magnitude and also the direction that the object has a speed in, the direction that it's moving. 